Good afternoon, all, and welcome to the November meeting of the Town of Newbury Human Resources Board. It is uh, 4 p.m. I call the meeting to order, and present are Diane Doyle, Mark Fleckman, John Ferrar, Anthony Antico, Patty Fisher. Thank you all. Uh, Lynn Peabody uh, will not be joining us tonight. She's got uh, work commitments that make it impossible for her, but I have a short of we are uh, successful in meeting our quorum responsibilities, so we're all set. Next order of business is to approve the prior meeting's minutes. Diane, thank you in advance, as always, for providing those. Uh, is there a motion to accept the minutes as written? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Not Everyone's had an opportunity to read through the minutes? Yes. Yep. No edits, no changes, no additions at this point? I'll accept a motion to accept the, uh, the minutes. Motion to accept the minutes as written. Second. Second. All in favor of accepting the minutes as written, say aye. 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 Thank you. Employee issues, let me turn to Diane and uh, then Patty to see if there's anything new that we should be aware of. No. Nothing at Town Hall. PD? Nope. No, no, all good? brought to my attention. So That's good. a good thing. Yep. Personnel actions and job vacancies, Diane? Okay, I'm uh, just looking back here. Um, so we've had, um, we've had a few changes. We have hired a full-time, what was the date of our last meeting? October 23rd. So we've hired one full-time firefighter, new firefighter. He was a call firefighter and had passed his um, certification. So we have Jordan Hebert, who's filled one of the full-time firefighter slots. Um, vacated by two of the personnel who resigned. We also have um, Chief Evans on board November 1st. Um, many of you were at the swearing-in, so he is on board full-time. Um, Wally Zeela, who was the interim fire chief, has stepped down back to his position as administrative assistant um, for the fire department. Um, we also have a couple of resignations. Um, it was announced at the last select board meeting that Julie O'Brien, who is the executive administrator to the Board of Selectmen, has resigned effective this Thursday. So she will be leaving us. Um, and the position is posted. Um, and we're looking to fill that. Um, Another resignation was Samantha Holt, who's our conservation agent. She has submitted her letter of resignation and will also be leaving on Thursday, November 30th. Um, and that, I believe, in the midst of posting that position as well. Um, Are they going to other positions or just other so, villages? Um, one of them is leaving as I always hesitate in saying where they're going, but one of them is not going to another community in the same role. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one is not going to another municipality, um, going into private private position somewhere. Um, you know, and Julie had come to that role from another department in town. Was it an internal transfer, correct? So she had been the DPW administrative assistant right. and had moved into that role when Ellen Jamison retired. Okay. Are we aware of yet of whether anyone is internally is posted for the uh, um, and then just, this is our Julie as we walk in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Yep. Soon to be someone else's Julie. Yeah. <laughs> she, she always laughs at my jokes. I, mean, I, just, I, I just said hello. She's yeah. Mm -hmm. That's I've you know been that? saying hello to her for years. Just for that. That was that's she's resigned? Yeah. So we also have a third resignation that's going to be effective in January. Um, and I believe it's been posted and, or is in the midst of being posted and has been shared with the Library Board of Trustees. But Erin Thompson, our library director, has also submitted her letter of resignation effective January 26th. Well, I just, that explains a lot. I've sent her two emails and two phone calls and asked, telling her I had some books to donate, a large number of history master's studies and journals from Boston University never heard back. She actually was out for a little bit, but no. um, she has submitted her letter of resignation. Uh, January 26th, she'll stay through the holidays. 
Um, and I know that they're looking at some internal candidates and trying to determine where they go with the Maybe the library board? Yes. Um, they're right trying to determine yes. where they go with their search at this point. Okay. But um, she will be on board until late January. What about hiring from within Aaron's move up the line or something? Or? Yeah, so I think that's what they're trying to figure out at this point. But I do know it was announced at the library board of trustees, and I know um, that it's, <coughs> it's for public knowledge at this point so okay um that is what i have thank you Megan. that's a lot <laughs> well it's just enough it, it, curious to me is that, do they go through exit interviews so we know why they're choosing to leave us or? so that's that question has come up before and yeah. i think i had suggested that we pose it to tracy yeah. i believe that they have exit interviews with their department managers or or board of trustees you know board of trustees or or whomever um but as far as anything beyond that i I can't speak to that. I don't, I don't know. It's, I mean, I've, we've all worked hard in other careers and spent 50 years in an industry that when you have somebody of worth, substance, and loyalty, they come to the office one Tuesday morning out of the blue and say, I'm terribly sorry, but I have other opportunities. That, that sets a lot in motion because of the investments, emotionally as well as financially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think, as I've said before, people leave for various reasons. Yeah. I think, you know, sometimes it's professional, sometimes it's personal, sometimes it's retirement. I think, as I said, in a couple of these cases, they're not going to other municipalities. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Understood. And as it relates to uh, exit interviews, my, my recall is that in the past, Tracy said that it is not necessarily a formalized part of the exit process, but that whenever possible she does not only herself, but she encourages department managers to sit and and, and determine what ifs and, and you know what if anything could be avoided and so forth and so on. So but I, I don't think it's a it's an official part of the practice. Sure. Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, I would say that's true. Okay. Thank you, Diane. That's all I have. Chief, anything to report uh, personnel wise with uh, PD? No. Okay. Still not one would maintaining good. Okay, still looking. I think last month we talked about uh, one or two open positions still dispatch. Or? So we're still looking for part time um, dispatchers and anyone who has full time academy certification um, for officers who's interested in part time hours. Right. Um, which that's. I wish us luck with that, but that's yeah. that's kind of a dying breed with um, post and police reform and, you know, no longer reserve certification and everyone has to have full-time academy certifications. Um, a lot of people who have their full-time academy certifications kind of feel like, why would I work for part-time pay when I right. see training as, you know, full-time people? Um, so, but we still have it out there in case there's okay. a pot Thank of gold. You. Okay. Next agenda item of workplace ethics, discrimination issues, nothing I'm aware of again, no. thankfully. No. Anything that uh, comes out of your attention as the employer no. reps? No? Okay. Safety issues, Chief? No issues. Nothing's been reported and everything's Protocols going remain in place, whatever they are. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Following uh, for COVID, we're still following um, the CDC guidelines. No, no upticks. Locally that I'm aware of. Nothing that's been reported yeah. to me. No. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. By the way, is this the month we start talking about flu shots and what's happening with the, the employee population with the clinics? And we did have a flu clinic. Um, Six weeks ago? Four that, weeks ago? I was going to say, I was okay. thinking it, yeah. was, it was four <laughs> weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. Um, I can pull up the date of it. Um, so we did have a flu clinic um, for staff, um, and so outreach was done around that. Good. And it's a, it's a one and done, right? Flu clinic, <coughs> not a series. No. no. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. On to other business. Uh, in order, review of language changes by town council. Diane was kind enough to forward to me, which I then I believe forwarded on to everyone. Yeah, yeah. These are the changes we've been waiting on for a couple months uh, from town council who uh, shared their thoughts with Tracy. Tracy in turn passed it on to us. 
Uh, has everyone had an opportunity to review the, the edits? Mm -hmm. okay. Let's open it up for discussion thoughts. As, as I think we can see, they expanded the definition of family in some sections. They shrunk the definition of family in other sections. It, it was clear that there was never going to be consistency in all the different parts of the policy, but it was interesting that the town, town council, upon further review, uh, shrunk it in one area, expanded in another, and the third, I think, did it remain the same, or did that also get... In one case, there was no definition of family. It just stated well, they, family members as it related to sick people. And they created, and and they created okay. what it would be. And so, just as a, um, an aside, I asked Tracy if she had had a conversation with town council as to, you know, why certain things were adjusted the way they were, and, you know, basically the reasoning behind it. And the response was that town council felt that the changes presented here are consistent with practice in other communities. Mm -hmm. Um, and as it relates to each individual sort of category, if you will. But she said that town council felt that these were more in line. Our, you know, that there was some, a need for some changes, and they, these are more in line with what, across the board, um, our practice. Yep. And the more expansive, expansive for bereavement is just the very nature of the request, as opposed to sick. Right. As opposed to loss. All right. Well, why don't we take them in the order in which they're, no, they're written? Say, so, make sense? Okay. Yeah, I, I was going to suggest that we just yeah. read it. So, on the, uh, I don't know if everyone had the same page. So I've got at the bottom of page 24. Mm -hmm. The first section is sick leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for the purposes of this section, immediate family shall consist of spouse or domestic partner, parents, step parents, child, and stepchild. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thoughts on that? Well, it speaks to, directly to the people who will be affected by somebody that's about to give birth or is sick uh, or, or disabled. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas uh, the next category obviously is more expansive right. because it impacts many more people. Okay. Good. Now, these yeah. are people that are tethered to the individual right. putting in for sick leave. Right. So you're comfortable with that definition? Very comfortable. Tony? Yeah. Very comfortable. It came from a law firm. <laughs> <laughs> the gospel. Uh, well, you know, according to. And I, I, yeah, I really don't know whether there were any. And I had to possibly see, in certain cases, somebody get, getting involved in litigation, and filing suit. You know, how come my, you know, my my whatever isn't included here? That kind of thing. So maybe they looked at at a history, you know, and and uh, and uh, drafted it that way to avoid right. a particular problem. You know? yeah. I think so. it's reasonable to assume that the town council, as Diane said, you know, mm -hmm. made the judgment that, that whatever, the, whatever case law exists on the books, right, right. in combination with what is the general practice mm -hmm. in most municipalities, this is what they've come up with here. Yeah, uh, I think that should, I, I'd like to think, be our guiding light, mm -hmm. uh, unless we see mm -hmm. something that's egregious that mm -hmm that the town of Newbury feels is inconsistent with what its right. belief systems might be about yeah. definition of a family. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the absence mm -hmm. of that, I think it makes sense to be consistent with uh, what town council says other municipalities are doing for their definition. So. And one of the things as a, as a department head that I appreciate about, about giving the definitions and the clarity is from employee to employer it's known going into it, so there's no prior, you know, intentional or unintentional um, inconsistent act. So me as a department head this year, I'm not saying stepchild counts for you, and, I, and then three years later I forget that it counted for you, but I'm saying no, it doesn't count for you because I forgot, right? It's, it's open when you, when you get hired and you look over the manuals, you're seeing whether or not these definitions are suitable to your personal needs and what you have going on in your life, and you can make your decisions to, you know, accept employment based on those. And department heads can be consistent when we have definitions right. of what's included, and I I think that's always a good thing, so that we're being consistent throughout all of our departments right. and with all of our employees over the course of our tenure. Right. Yeah. I think sure. it makes sense. I mean, we, we lacked a definition before. It just stated you could, be, you, you could use it for family members. And mm -hmm. so I appreciate the fact that mm -hmm. it's spelled out. And to John's point, I think these are consistent with what you might consider to be dependents. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's great that that's, that's 
Right. I would agree. And to, to further Patty's point, um, when we created the personnel policy X number of years ago, that was that was the guiding principle, which is to to, uh, to you know have a foundation in place that any employee, any department manager, up to the TA, you know, could go to the policy and see what definitions exist, uh, as evidenced by what's happened over the past few years. From time to time, we tweak it. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's, that's why we always described it as a living document, that every time you think you've got every eventuality covered, something, you know, something pops up. Uh, and I also think it's, it's great that a number of years ago at town meeting, uh, the population decided that in order to change the language in any section of the personnel policy, it no longer had to go to town meeting. Mm -hmm. It can now go to the select board. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, of course, are the... the, the uh, the conduit for any of those mm -hmm. language changes to the select board, but it now becomes much easier to amend the document rather than having to wait twice a year for a time meeting, That's a special right, yeah. time meeting. So, so with that said, I'm in agreement as well. Uh, any further discussion about that section of definition on the sick leave? If Can not, anyone in their own personal situations think of what they consider a family member that might not be included in this particular definition? <clears throat> Just trying to look at it through yeah, all not those in that section. Not, not in that I, I can't either, but yeah. I figured just to throw it out there. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Yeah, I know some interest. It's, they're almost top bottom. Uh, this is bereavement. Yeah. You know, yeah. disability reaching down to people that depend on them. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it's it's top down where bereavement is bottom up. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. So let's vote on each one of these sections separately to okay. to be able to define. How we feel about it. So, as it relates to the definition of family and sick leave, uh, I make a motion to accept make, the language. Make a motion to accept the language as changed. Second. 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 Uh, all in favor of the language changes, say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> the next section we're going to review is what page? Page 27. 27. And that is the definition of family as it relates to bereavement. We and this was the first section that came to our attention. If I'm not mistaken, a couple months ago. So, what prompted this review of these specific areas was um, two employees who had brought it to our attention that there were certain individuals not included in this right. category that they felt should warrant a further review. So, that's what sort of prompted right. our review of these sections. Great, thank you. And so, in the section on the bereavement leave, town council has recommended a, a more expansive list of uh, family members. Mm -hmm. uh, immediate family she consi shall consist of spouse or domestic partner, parents, brother, sister, child, stepchildren, spouses or partners, father or mother, mm -hmm. step parents, step siblings, grandparents grandchildren, sister or brother-in-law, aunt, uncle, niece, nephew, first cousins, and son or daughter-in-law. Open up to discussion. Again, a, a reasonable uh, tether to the person that's taking the bereavement leave is, uh, is connected directly to each and every one of those categories. Mm -hmm. And uh, whereas um, the prior case, not so. Yeah. It's, uh... Thank you. It wasn't the prior situation just immediate family? Is that um, what it said? No. Some, some, something bland like that? No. Once, no. Once back. The, yeah. I think what was missing was um, step. Step. And ah. we had had a discussion about right. recommending that we add steps <coughs> and aunts and uncles. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so was the main concern. Step and children, step parents. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. As well, I think, maybe. I think the first cousins. cousins, 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 cousins. The, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I so know in my circumstance, we, we, we've had two uh, seniors in the last five years, uh, both at, uh, at Washington's National Cemetery, and there were 75 people in Belhagen, and it included stepchildren, cousins, uncles, godchildren. Godfathers, godmothers, who were arts and uncles to one of the brothers of the deceased. And, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it, 
it's easy to trace a tether down to every uh, category there if they lose a loved one. Yeah. Sure. I have it here if anyone wants me to read what it says in the manual that I have. Oh, what? please. Please do. So, employees shall be granted a leave of absence with pay in the event of the death of their immediate family member. Immediate family member shall consist of spouse or domestic partner, partners, brother, sister, child, spouses, partners, father or mother, grandparents, grandchildren, grandchildren, sister or brother-in-law, and son or daughter-in-law. Added the steps. The steps and the cousins. Right. And aunt and uncle. And right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. Grammatical things. Should there be a? If you look on this, let me see if it's here. One of my reading glasses on. <laughs> uh, so grandparents, grandchildren. Should it there oh, be a mom. comma? Yeah. And then sister or brother-in-law. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Oh. I could Excellent. see. I could see you. Have, you I could see it on the bigger prints, not the smaller prints. And using the same question you asked in mm -hmm. the prior section, I would feel comfortable if anyone in my family were in that situation to be included. Mm -hmm. I, I think that. Yeah, I can't think of a situation in that of someone who I would expect to be able to use bereavement for, right. who was not listed there. I would say that in the last 13 years, the folks who, the only folks that have come up that weren't covered are now covered here. Okay. Um, and the other thing that I would also say is that, as I've said before, you know, we have situations you, you're never, this list is very expansive. Um, we all are in situations where we might lose a friend or a friend's parent who is just as meaningful as our own family and we can never fully encompass all of yeah. that. Um, but I know the management to be agreeable to making up time or using vacation time mm -hmm. in the event that you have something yeah. like that. And right. I myself have been in that situation where I've taken a vacation day mm -hmm. for a friend's husband. So I, I, in the last 13 years, the only things that have been brought to our attention that weren't covered that were considered family are now in here. Wonderful. And yeah. um, I would agree with the language. Right. And there's always consideration given off the books, if you will, for extraordinary circumstances. Mm -hmm. that's, that's always been the case, as it should be. Yeah. So. Use of vacation time or making up time or yes. anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Good. Okay. Any other discussion about that section? Is there a motion to accept that language change? Motion. Second? Oh, second. All in favor of that language change, say aye. 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 Thank you. And the third and final section of this is... Um, well, she just updated the language here as it related to domestic leave, but that wasn't really... We didn't... She... she where the definition under domestic leave, she right. added that change in as well. Okay, under domestic leave, page 28. Mm -hmm. Family members for the purposes of this section, domestic leave. Let me just read the, the whole thing. In case of abuse of a family member, the employee is not entitled to leave if he or she is the alleged perpetrator. Family members for the purpose of this section, parentheses, domestic leave, close parentheses, shall include parents, siblings, siblings, children, spouses, and step parents, or any individuals under the care and custody of an employee, or any individuals who reside in the same residence. I think that opens it up to check the box of the question we're asking of. Right. Yeah. Any further discussion of that section? a motion to accept that language change is written? So moved. Second? Second. Sure. Any discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. And the final section is nepotism. 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 Page 57. Which was narrowed significantly. I'm sorry? Which is narrowed. Yeah, this is, this is the narrowing of the uh, definition of family. Okay. For the purposes of nepotism, Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, let me just read the whole thing. Purpose, the town's employment policy ensures that municipal employees' private relationships 
do not conflict with their public obligation to act objectively and with integrity. The town's objective is to prevent a municipal employee from becoming involved in a situation which could result or give the appearance of a conflict. The town seeks to provide equal employment opportunity to all applicants for employment. For the purposes of nepotism, municipal employee's family member is considered the following. Employee's spouse and their parents, children, brothers, and sisters. Open it up for discussion. And this is a narrow one, right? I don't have the original language. Patty has it. And this is this is not un unusual in the industry uh, industry as well as obviously domestic. Would you like me to read city. what's in there? Uh, the element is that you know if you if you have a position of authority and and you're going to promote one of your siblings or your spouse or your, I mean, it's just it's a matter of uh, step aside and let somebody else make the judgment. I mean, you could almost expand that list of where close relationships uh, where you could you could uh, auger in and assist an individual just out of out of paternal you know background. And, Maybe it makes sense for Patty to read what it stated before. Yeah. The original language? <clears throat> yep. Can you have the original language there? I do. So a municipal employee's family, family member is considered the following. Husband, wife, daughter, son. Mother, father, mother-in-law, father-in-law, stepmother, stepfather, sister, brother, sister-in-law, brother-in-law, Stepsister, stepbrother, grandmother, grandfather, granddaughter, grandson, aunt, uncle, niece, nephew, and first cousins. I like that. That's, they really slimmed that down. That's good. Good that they slimmed it down? It, that isn't, no, I prefer the original. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. I prefer that. So I'm wondering, is there history behind it? Do we have a reason why this came up? Well, what, the reason why it's under review is because we are reviewing all language in the policy that relates to the definition of family. And it was brought to, when we first looked at this, we said, well, nepotism says this, okay. bereavement says this, family, you know, sick leave says nothing. So um, that was more, we, we knew that was more expansive. And I think the discussion was because for appearances sake, you know, it may Maybe that's why it's more expansive. But again, the, when Tracy checked with town council, it was consistent with what they've seen. So I, other than that, I don't have any information as to why it was pared down. So I'm a simple person. I think if there's one definition, mm -hmm. it should be the same definition kind of throughout. Mm -hmm. There's a part of me that doesn't understand why a definition would fit for one and, and not another. Because to me, let's say we have this all-inclusive definition. It just means there needs to be another step in place when disciplining, <coughs> promoting, you know what I mean? Supervising, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, not that it can't, that it's impossible to happen in a workplace. Um, so I just, I worry that if we have different definitions for the same phrase, that that in and of itself is an inconsistency. Thoughts? Uh, I guess I didn't have any, on the surface, any issue with changing definitions depending on which section of the personnel policy it was referring to. Okay. But interestingly enough, as, as is the case with some other folks here, I had a problem with the narrowing of the definition for nepotism because uh, as a layperson, you know, I'm always very careful for the town of, of anything that that could be perceived as inappropriate. Mm. A, a gratuity, uh, a benefit. Um, or the perception. And, <laughs> like, yeah. and, and nepotism to me, again, as a layperson, 
I would think that would be a more expensive versus a less expensive list. I mean, let's play out the scenario. A department manager hires his or her cousin or, you know, uh, whatever's not on this list that may be in others. That, to me, would be... Um, we don't even have domestic partner on the list question. that they're suggesting, which that's <clears throat> language on the other ones. Yeah, but certainly, should, you're right, to be consistent, yeah. it should To be consistent, I mean, even if we keep the narrow spouse, version... Spouse or domestic Or, or domestic partner, yeah. I think, needs, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I would even stretch it to say, look at the... I didn't mean to interrupt you, Mark, I'm no, sorry, I'm just reading two things and it popped into my head. I would even stretch it to say people who live under your roof. Yeah. Right? I have a cousin living with me and I'm I'm they're an officer under me and there's no Right. Yeah. 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 So I, I think it sounds like a number of us have the same reaction to at least that this section. Yeah. And your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean I agree. I I think I I agree. I, think it's a natural... I was surprised that it was narrowed. Um I mean, it doesn't include step parents. Uh, I guess yeah. I would. I guess my could, question. Go ahead. I was just going to ask whether, whether you could uh, request an explanation that, for yeah. the narrowing. Then. Yeah, that's the next step. Absolutely. Uh, well, or I was going to say we could suggest maybe here that we would want the definition to be more inclusive, possibly the same as bereavement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless there is a specific reason why we would not want to do that. It has to be a rationale. Because yeah. you figure, again, I default to me as a department head, right? I have a stepson and I, who I've been with since he's been five, and I have a biological child, right? This, for the purpose of this, he, my stepson isn't considered nepotism, which is would be crazy to me. Right. <laughs> like, I would want the protection of having right. to follow these rules if for somehow, some way, yeah. my steps came to work for the town. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Because to me, from my lens as a parent, yeah. there's no difference between my stepson and yeah. my, my biological son right. Right. In, in that aspect. Right. And, and just thinking about the, the other sections, Patty, to, to the point you made about should it be consistent across the board, I guess... My feeling is, I'm fine with a, a different definition as it relates to something like bereavement or sick, or, or sick leave, uh, um, sick time, uh, as opposed to nepotism, which which to me is a is a much more sensitive issue. Uh, it, it's a that's a, a potentially damaging issue to the town, its reputation, credibility, the department head, the employee, even though it all may be, you know, very, um, very safe and simple. Um, I guess I don't have any, I don't have a major problem with different definitions depending on what we're referring to, but I do have a problem with the nepotism piece of it. You know, one, one, element, one element of I've said on two foundations as an advisor and sat on the board of another. And the board foundation development or makeup is very strict regarding nepotism. The, the natural order of uh, bringing somebody on board that you trust and are comfortable with doesn't speak to the skill set. Mm -hmm. And the element is you begin to uh, diminish the, 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 the thorough uh, drill down is to people's skills and capabilities to do the position that you're asking right. them to do. And, and uh, virtually the list is enormously expansive and the question and answer in the interview process drills down as to history, uh, amount of time spent with, how did you meet, all the above. Right. Uh, right. And this, this is very short and, yeah. and, and the, the chiefs is, is remarkable. I mean, literally, your stepson, literally 10 years from now, could uh, be the deputy and, and, and have none of the accoutrement that's required uh, yeah. in another town, excuse me. Right? Yeah. In, a, in a village uh, like ours, at least, we've got uh, a lot of eyes and, and a lot of integrity, but you can see where in other realms, the integrity could go away in a hurry. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Did you? Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Did you? I was going to ask you. Did you pull up um, conflict of interest law, master in the law? No, I 
I, I, I pulled up the definition of nepotism. Okay. And uh, from who? From the Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, well, it actually comes it's, it's from the Italian nepotismo, from nepote, nephew. Yeah. Ne N e p o t e. Okay. Uh, from the form of papal practice, papal practice of granting special favors to nephews or other relatives. You know, that's, that, that's uh, nepotism, and, and, and the definition actually is patronage bestowed or favoritism shown on the basis of family relationship, okay? So my buddy Freddie down the street, you know, uh, he's fine, uh, whatever. My, my, my members of my family, I, I really can't uh, do anything about it. I think that's the intent of nepotism. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, how much? Well, nepotism, nepotism is being literally translated here in this paragraph. Yeah. It doesn't expand beyond it. The only thing I would say is that it says this policy consistent with Section 19, the nepotism section of the Conflict of Interest Law, Mass General Law, Chapter 2268A. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if in that Conflict of Interest section of Mass General Law it defines can't remember if we discussed that or not. If it if it defines what was it? What was the two sixty eight A? Mass General Law Chapter two sixty eight A. Mm-hmm. Section. Yeah. Is that a section? Section nineteen. What did we do before? Oh, this is the title. That would be my only thing. Yeah. Because I was thinking, so let's say I hire a family member. We have to report that. That has to get reported to the Commonwealth, right? So it goes is, on to say that if there is a conflict, it has to be reported. Um, I wonder if that reported, is this the definition that the state uses? That's, you know, we're, we'd want to be consistent with what the state requires, whether that's the minimal, the maximum, or some happy in between. I just think in this section we err on the side of caution. Uh, yeah. I, I would much prefer a more expansive versus a, a less expansive list in terms of nepotism, because I think you know slash conflict of interest. Um, I think it's 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 a more egregious sin if you know. Even if no sin is there. Even if no ill intent or no action, no ill practice. Portraits words the, words the, 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 the appearance, right? It, it's the, if I hire a family member, member, I want to be able to say with clear conscience to the public, I have filed all the documentation I need to file, I have reported to all whoever right. department heads need to know, and this is the supervision plan right. for... Yeah. yeah I, I think we're all in this, generally in the same mind here, so why don't I recommend that we accept the changes of the other three sections and hold on this one and get further clarity from town council as to whether that definition needs to stand based on mass general law or whether we can play with it and if so at our next meeting decide on that and then bring the whole thing to the select board but that our our recommendation or our thought is that we want it to be inclusive more inclusive more inclusive mm -hmm. that's okay. my yeah. thinking okay. i don't want to speak for other folks but it sounds like that's the yeah. consensus here Okay. So we good with that? We'll accept the other three changes. Yes. Hold on nepotism. Mm -hmm. Get further clarity from town council. Mm -hmm. Vote on this final section, depending on whether the language changes or not at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. And then we can put it, put the entire thing in front of the select board for probably the January meeting. Okay. Agreed. Folks agree with that? I do. Okay. Thank you all for that exercise. Conversation. Do you want me to do the next one? Yes, final piece of uh, new business is, is a question that has come to us from an employee relative to uh, Town of Newbury's sick time policy for permanent part time employees. Mm -hmm. And Diane was kind enough to include that section in the, the handout. So maybe I could just briefly talk about the sick policy yeah. okay. and then explain yeah, what, the, yeah. what okay. the suggestion is. So <clears throat> full-time employees, 35 hours or more, receive 10 hours of sick time per month. 
anyone that falls as a permanent part-time employee that's benefit eligible between the hours 20 hours per week and 34 hours per week receive five hours of sick time per month as an accrual. So if you are a permanent benefited part-time employee who works a consistent schedule of 20 to 34 hours for 52 weeks in a year, you receive five hours. And so um, we, it has been at, it's been asked of us to take a look at that because someone who's working 20 hours receiving five hours and someone who's working just an hour less than the 35 is also receiving five hours. And so it's been asked to take a look at this and does it make sense to make any changes or come up with a graduated, um, you know, category, Sorry. if you will, and, yeah. and you know, and, and to take a look at whether or not that's something that we would want to change. So, so in other words, instead of maybe two buckets, one bucket being 10 hours for full-time, five hours for anything below full-time, perhaps there's a third bucket or, or a three or four buckets. So from 20 to 25 hours, it might be X. From 25 to 30, it might you be You work y. between this many hours and this many hours, you receive this. And as the hours increase, the earned right. sick time increases right. as well. I think, yeah. I, so we had the grade uh, similar to that with vacation leave. Yeah. You graded benefit based on how long you've been. But that's for full time. In yeah, full time. Yeah. Well, that's for full time and permanent part time employees. Who yeah. the, the the thing with vacation time is, you receive two uh, two weeks off. Yeah. If you work a twenty hour work schedule, you're getting two out two weeks of twenty hours. Yeah. If you get if you're thirty five hours, you're getting two weeks of thirty five hours. Yeah. So that is consistent with, it's prorated, it's based on your work schedule. You hit 5, 10, 15 years of service, you get an extra week or an extra two weeks or an extra, you know, whatever the, the weeks is. So that's based on longevity of being in that position. But the inconsistency with the sick leave is that bucket of someone who's working 20 hours, say they're working four or five hour days, they're getting one day off a month, as opposed to someone who's working 34 hours and they're getting five hours and they work, you know, what, seven, seven times four, 28, seven and a half or so, they're not even getting a full sick day off. Mm -hmm. So it, does that make sense? It does. Okay, so. So, yeah. so the sick day, is that compute towards the hours you work or like, is that eight hours or is that if you only work four hours a day, it's four hours? So it's your, you accrue it by, five hours, so anyone that works between 20 and 34 gets five hours. If you are to take a sick day and you work 34 hours and your day is seven hours, you're only getting, you can only, you, use five you, have, to, you have to work more than a month to get enough to take a day off. Okay, okay. thank you. Does that make sense? No, it does, yeah. I understand the, yeah. the desire to have yeah, and, and a couple, I think a couple different buckets. A couple different buckets. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the, the principle of different buckets would also correct me if I'm wrong. It would it would keep from an administrative standpoint. It would it would keep us away from having to compute every single employee's number of hours that he or she works if you do it just by individual, right? So in other words, prorating prorating your sick time based on your schedule. So, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so you could have somebody that works 20 gets five, somebody who works 24 gets 5.67, somebody who works 30 gets 32, 34. You're gonna have, if we prorated that difference by what your schedule is. So we were thinking if you created two or three more buckets to sort of equalize. But you're not you're not bringing in the concept of parts of a day, are you? What do you mean? I mean, uh, the guy says, "Well, I'm hit three o'clock. I got to go back to work. I'm only allotted so much time." No, because you can. What I'm saying, what I'm suggesting is, if someone that's working 34 hours, they're one hour shy of getting that 10 hours a mm -hmm. month. They're if they're at 34 and their work day is seven and a half hours, they're only going to get five hours under the current policy of sick time per month. So they're gonna to have to work 1.2 months to be able to afford to take one day off. Mm -hmm. So therein lies the inconsistency of, 
I mean, with the, with the 20 hour employee, if they're working four or five hour days and they get five hours a month, they get a day off. So, so if we were looking at buckets and pots, right? So the minimum that someone receives right now, you're saying, is five hours. Because anyone that works below 20 hours is non-benefit eligible, so they don't get any sick time. Right. So the, the minimum is 20 hours. Yeah. They get five hours per month. So, and then a full-time employee gets 10. 10 hours. So let's say the top bucket is nine hours. You have a middle bucket of seven hours and a bottom bucket of five hours. We would just need to figure out if you work between 20 and blank hours, you're in the five hour bucket. If you work between that blank and another blank, you're in the seven. You know what I mean? Like if we, if we looked at it in three buckets or you could look at it in two buckets. So my initial thought, and I'm just going to throw it out there, yeah. is anyone that works from 20 to 27 mm -hmm. gets five. Yep. But there, that defeats the argument that I had of anyone getting a full day off. But, and then 27 to 34 gets seven and a half hours. But I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a minute. If I'm working 20 hours a week, the likelihood of my sick day every month falling on one of my 20 hours a week well, if you work four days a week and you get and you work five hours a day, you're going to get one sick day a month. That's what I mean. So that five hours would cover me. Right. For a sick day a month. And then assuming, I mean, I haven't had a sick day in I don't know how long, right? They, they earn the bank, mm -hmm. right? So it makes it possible for those 20 to 27 hour employees to still have a bank. How often does someone use their sick day every month? People yeah. People use all people. Some people use it every month. You'd be surprised. What if we considered? What if we considered taking the person's schedule? I mean, this would be a little bit more. I don't think there's that many employees. But what if we were to take what someone's weekly work schedule was and dividing it by you know, giving giving them calculating it one day? So if you had an employee that worked. times seven, 28 hours a week, they would get seven hours of sick time per month, which would be one day. If you had someone that worked 34 hours a month or 32 hours a month, you take whatever their weekly schedule is, divide it by their number of days and give them whatever one sick day would be. I mean, it, it's more buckets, but is that a fairer way to do it? Well, the ratio would stay the same, right? It would be, yeah, you would just calculate other. each person's weekly schedule and, and calculate their sick leave to be one day per month. Well, let's just start real quick with the overriding principle of it. Yes. D does the board feel it's appropriate to, to differentiate from, from a sick time perspective somebody who's working 34 hours a week versus somebody who's working 20 hours a week? Right, that's, that's the overarching question. I do, because my, my principal thought is the more hours you work, the more likely I'm going to be sick during my work time. Therefore, I should be eligible mm -hmm. to have that amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still right. stumped that there's... So then it becomes just a question of the arithmetic. Yeah. yeah. But it seems a numerator and denominator that if you've got full-timers earning up to, in one year's time, 120 hours of credit, Mm -hmm. and part-time is 60 hours of credit mm -hmm. and then if they're working a 35 hour week we could we could simply create a ratio it, as opposed to 26 hours a week that would be comparable and compatible with 120 and 60 and in other words what portion of 60 hours uh, if you work 35 hours a week or 26 hours a week 34 anybody that's 35 is getting 10 hours 10 hours so, so 34 and what's the other break point it's 20 to 34. 20 to 34. And it's, it seems to me we could almost develop a ratio that well, stays within the, the uh, 60 hours and 120 so, hours. And so you I think it would be one day of whatever their work yeah. schedule is. Yeah. Question. Yes. Are any of these days cumulative? So they accumulate, they accumulate up to... Max, um, yeah. So for the sake of the 20 to 34 hmm. hour employees, they can accumulate them up to 480 hours. Okay. And 960 for the long time. And 960 time. for, yeah. for full-time, hmm. 35 and above. Hmm. Yeah. 
they can accumulate, but you can't. You don't get paid out for them if you leave. They're not. They're not, they're not compensated. They're not quarterly. Right. 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 Okay. So use them all over. Right. Use them. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now that's interesting. My mother. When she left the city of Boston teaching realm, it's about 290 So do, do we need to maybe so, work the math? Or? So I just, yeah. so I just, let's just, for example, someone who works 32 hours, and they work four-day schedules, divided by four, they're getting eight hours per, of sick time per month, as opposed to the person who's working 20 hours who's getting five. Yeah. And I don't think, I don't think in terms of, the administration of it, it's going to be a nightmare because most people either work 35 mm -hmm. or they work, there are there are a few that work between the 20 and 34. I don't think yeah. there's, a, I don't think there's an astronomical amount of employees that it would be a burden to calculate okay. one sick day per month. So, so the bookkeeping of it is reasonable. I think it would be fine. So okay. if somebody works 20 hours in a given month yeah. on a full-time basis, I'm sorry. A week. A week. A week. Uh, they get 57, uh, 0.5714 of the sick pay. No, they'd get their five. Well, it would depend on what they're No, I'm, I'm giving you a ratio. In other words, whatever, the, whatever they've, they've received for having uh, achieved their full 60 hours. Uh, they're going to get a pro rata share if they only work 20 of the 35 hour a week. Yeah, they get if they work 20 hours per per month per week, yeah. and they work four days a week, they're going to get five hours mm -hmm. times 12 months is 60 hours. But I, I'm suggesting that okay, but they're putting in less time uh, than somebody who works 35 hours as a part timer. Well, 35 Which, is 10 hours. It's full time. They'd be full time. Yeah. yeah. So if somebody works 32 hours a week and they work four days a week, they're going to get eight hours of sick time. Okay. So they're going to proportionately more. Proportionately. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you would just calculate what's their number of hours per week. Yeah. How many days do they work? And that's what they get. Yeah. Okay. Per month. Question, Diane. When a permanent part time employee is hired, mm -hmm. it's, does it say in their contract, employment agreement, whatever it is, that you are expected to work X amount. Like I know, like Martha, she works 19 hours a week. Um, that's in her agreement. So sometimes if they work more or a little less the other week, you're just saying base it on what their contractual week, work week is. So you're not, if she's not working a consistent 20 hours per week yeah. for 52 weeks in a year, She's non-benefit eligible at 19, even though she may work 22 or 24. Perfect. She's not yeah. benefit yes. eligible. That's considered to be a, um, it's like when we had the reserve officers, yeah. they would work 16 hours, but they would pick up shifts, yeah. putting them at 24 or 32. Okay. They're considered a, it's not <clears throat> a permanent schedule. That's why permanent schedules are, I that's how, it, we're, with, right. especially when it was came to the reserve officers. Yes. So with the permanent scheduled employees who work in this window that we're talking yes. about, their contractual agreement states how many hours they're to work yes. per week. Okay. And I will also add that they are required to work that number of hours because they are um, mandatory Essex Regional <coughs> retirement members. And okay. so if they don't work their contractual hours, from 20 to 34 or even 30 full-timers, if they're not working that consistent schedule, then that impacts their retirement. So they, if they are hired to work 30 hours per week, they have to work 30 hours per week or they're using sick or vacation to make up the 30 hours mm -hmm. so that they're consistently being paid 30 hours Perfect. for Essex Regional. Okay. Thank you. Mm. So, uh, Diane, did you, you're right, your idea. Did you want to come up with language? So I would make a motion to amend the sick leave policy for permanent part-time employees so that sick leave is calculated as one day per week per, based on their weekly schedule and calculated to be one day per month based on their work schedule on a weekly basis. One day per month. One day per month. And Everyone I think understand that, that language? Yes, I do. And yeah, I think work day translated into hours. And I think that satisfies time. between the 60 and 120 hours that you're talking about. Right, yeah, right, yeah. Is there a second? Second, second. that. 
Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Yes. Thank you. And again, uh, thank you, Diane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Circuitous route, but we got there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So from an administrative standpoint, we're on hold for that fourth item under nepotism. I will circle back to see um, with the thoughts that we had about being more inclusive. Right. And then once we nail that down at our next meeting. And bring all of the changes. To all the of the change, changes would need to go to the select board for right. adoption. <clears throat> so hopefully all the changes, including this last piece on, on uh, speed, can go in front of the select board for the... January meeting, assuming that we get all the clarification we need about nepotism for our December meeting. Question about the changes, are we looking for them to go into effect immediately or effective July 1 or something like that? I think historically we've done it immediately. On, on the date that it's amended well, yeah, by the select yeah, board. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason why this has to be a mm -hmm. fiscal year thing. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the, that's been the practice over the years. Whenever whenever either town meeting or mm -hmm. select board more recently has, has adopted changes, they've gone into effect. So, so my, my thought for that question with the sick leave is that it doesn't go retroactive back to July 1. It starts effective the date. So you could potentially have somebody who in December is earning the lower amount and in January is earning the higher amount and it doesn't go retro into their bank. I would just want to make sure that there's no room for arguing to that. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't think we have precedent for retroactivity on any of these. I think the policy is changes. adopted and changed on the date that it's adopted. So therefore, it's yeah. effective going forward. I, okay. so. I just yeah. wanted to make sure. I'll check on that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. There is no retroactivity. Okay. Okay. We're good on that subject. Yes. Uh, we're going to put a hold on further discussion of MMA comp data. Uh, MMA has still, still. Uh, no. Something must have happened. Yeah, I, they're not. This is more than just a glitch with MMA. Yes, MMA. they are still in existence. Yeah. This this may be a uh, a hack of something. We don't know. I shouldn't, <laughs> I shouldn't speculate. But, but they said this system has been down for the better part of three months now on in this particular subject, mm -hmm. which is the accumulation of, of municipal data regarding mm -hmm. so compensation. So we are still on hold there. We did get one survey back, but I think in discussions we felt that we would wait for at least yeah, we another. We're still waiting for the Manchester by the Sea survey. Right. So we figured we'd postpone it, just kind of wait till we have more information right. than just a one off. Right. And push that into 2024 to review right. Thank you. So. With that said, next meeting December 25th. <laughs> I will not be here. I will not be here. <laughs> Okay, I think it's important that we hold a December meeting given the trailing items we've got here. So, mm -hmm. uh, Monday the 18th. What does Monday the 18th look like for people? I'm available. I'm I'm sorry? Available. I'm available. I'm available. Mm -hmm. I think so. Okay. All right, let's plug it in. Let's pencil it in for Monday the 18th. I'll alert Lynn that it's on the calendar, so we shall be able to make it. As always, if, if folks coming into the meeting or coming up to the meeting have challenges with their logistics or scheduling, let me know in advance to make sure we have a quorum. Okay. Uh, hope everybody enjoyed a happy, healthy, and safe Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And looking forward to more holidays. With that in mind, is there a motion to adjourn? Okay. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.